Hi, I'm LA County DA Steve Cooley, and you're watching SCV TV, local television for Santa Clarita. Cougar News is proudly sponsored by your local Little Caesars Pizza. Welcome to Cougar News. I'm Beatrice Franklin. Many of us rely on the convenience of our cell phones. So how would you react if you didn't have yours? And I'm Erin Fitzgerald. COC offend gives offending drivers a chance to hone their skills. That story ahead. And we have a look at the busy Cougars as they hit the diamond. Cougar News starts now. This is Cougar News Evening Edition. With information from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Cougar News. Good evening and welcome to the latest edition of Cougar News. I'm Erin Fitzgerald. And I'm Beatrice Franklin. Here's the latest from the Cougar Newsroom. Do you feel naked without your cell phone? How did people even live in the 80s? We have truly become reliant on these lifelines. Cody Bard has more on our cell phone obsession. Here's Cody from the Cougar Edit Suite. Thanks, Aaron. Society has developed an unhealthy dependency on their cell phones. So what do you do if you lose or break your cell phone? So pretty much I had everybody's number completely gone, and I totally had to go on MySpace and like ask for everybody's numbers again. It was horrible. All my contacts were completely gone. I just had to restart from the very bottom, you know, enter my home phone number, enter my, you know, my sister's phone number, start from the very bottom, work my way up. It was horrible. Seems like everyone has a cell phone, so what might be some ways to prevent yourself from losing your contacts? Yes, I've, I've had many phones and they're, they've all been stolen or lost and broken and pretty much you just, you, you write down all your contacts on a piece of paper Line, preferably. I backed them up online, and I looked them up, and they programmed them back on my phone. Easy. So it was, yeah, very easy. Um, but I tend to remember my contacts because I refuse to be tied down to anything other than my own brain. I mean, obviously, I couldn't remember like all 150 of them in there, but most of the numbers I have on my phone are worthless anyway. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not very good at memorization. I would say the best way to uphold all your information would be to write it down on a small phone book paper outside. I'm Cody Bard, reporting for Cougar News. Back to you guys. Every day, families in the Santa Clarita Valley tackle the tough issue of buying food or paying the bills. But it's not just moms and dads confronting this situation. It also weighs heavily on the minds of some COC students. But help is here. COC has teamed up with the Santa Clarita Valley Food Pantry to meet the needs of, the, of students. Cans of food were collected earlier this semester on campus. The food pantry also draws in resources area-wide. Several people took the advantage of the food drive. Hide and Honor volunteer passed out canned can goods and boxed items in the football stadium. Uh, the food is brought over from the food pantry, um, and then we set it up here, as you saw earlier, um, and basically um, the table outside is manned by food pantry staff, and in here is all COC volunteers. Um, basically, a student and their family um, makes under $1,200 or under a month. If you are interested in donating food too, you can email the pantry at scvfoodpantry.org. It's Red Cross Month and COC helped to save lives when our own ASG sponsored the Blood Mobile Drive on St. Patrick's Day at the Canyon Country Campus. On March 17th, while some were in the spirit of green for St. Patty's at College of the Canyon Country Campus, Others were in the spirit of red in donating their time and blood for those in need. And I had the chance to speak to a volunteer who's been donating his time for the last seven years. Well, this is the first time we've ever been out here, and it's a little bit on the disappointing side, but I think once the students get used to the idea of the Red Cross coming out here to do blood drives, they will improve. Any last words you want to say? If it needs to be done and you can do it, do it. If you missed this blood drive and want to give the gift of life by donating blood, you can go to www.givelife.org. As costs for just about everything rise throughout the country, it is becoming more and more challenging for Associated Student Government to keep within the 
their budget while still trying to, to keep CSE students involved and entertained on campus. The members of ASG have put forth extra effort this semester to ensure that students on both COC campuses are involved in school activities. The rising costs has forced ASG to increase the student support fee from $9 to $15. But basically, we need to um, increase the student support fee because we have a new campus, Canyon Country Center, and we need to uh, increase the activities, and we can really afford both camp campuses and provide all these um, programs to both campuses. With the additional money, ASG has continued to provide students with on-campus activities, but they now have more freedom to give back to the students. ASG spends countless hours creating posters advertising the free activities paid for by the student support fee. ASG provides students with free food such as pizza, cookies, and cupcakes. With your student support fee, we give out free pizzas, we have free hot dogs, barbecues and stuff like that. Every event we have free stuff going on for all students who are paying student support fee. The ASG members meet every Monday at 2.30 p.m. and always encourage students to voice their opinion on the usage of the student support fee. We have a lot of programs going on at school. We are um, spending money for the Kuga Mentor um, campus escort program. Despite the fact that we might be paying $6 extra, ASG provides the student body with far more than just $15 worth of school activities. Reporting for Cougar News, I'm Lacey Ehrlich. When you get a traffic ticket, you know what happens next. But now you don't have to stray from your home to serve your punishment. COC is now offering driver's education traffic school online. Motorists who are ticketed and need to fulfill their court requirements can access the website 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The cost for the course is $85 and it is licensed by the California DMV. For more information or to register, please visit www.canyons.edu slash community ed. CSC Admissions and Records Office has extended its hours. The office will now be open on Saturdays from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. in addition to the regular office hours. The extended hours are an effort to accommodate students with busy or non-flexible hours. Students who decide to go in during those hours will be able to utilize the resources of admissions and records, as well as meet with counseling representative or drop by the student business office. The new hours and availability of office staff should make it easy for students to reconcile all of their admission needs in one effective visit. Need something to do on Friday nights but don't want to spend more than $10 for a movie ticket? You're in luck. Friday nights at COC in Hasley Hall Room 101, there are free showings of films from across the world. It's called the Friday Night Screening Room. It's a good way to see movies you usually wouldn't be able to see in local theaters without taking a chunk out of your wallet. The Friday Night Screening Room really evolved from the International Film Festival. What we tried to do was expand and show weekly Friday evening films that are films that wouldn't necessarily screen in the Santa Clarita Valley. And what we're trying to do is bring these films as soon as they turn to DVD onto our screen here at College of the Canyons. Once a month on specific Fridays, we're showing films at four o'clock in Hasley 101 that are geared primarily for the family. And it's an opportunity for the students and community members to share in some really good family experience uh, in the movie theater. With the arrival of spring comes the annual spring concert. Jazz filled the Performing Arts Center on Friday night, the Studio Jazz Ensemble, an award-winning group of jazz performers, ser serenaded the audience with classic pieces. Earlier in the evening, a new ensemble was introduced, the Lab Combo Band made of beginning jazzers and more experienced players. It, pro it provides the students an opportunity to play and perform. If you missed the Studio Jazz Ensemble performance, They'll be playing again on March 30th at the Roast House in Santa Clarita. Stop by at 5.30 for great big band jazz. If you're looking for a way to drum up some excitement on Saturday evenings, the Santa Clarita Valley Drum Circle offers a fun and creative environment for people of all ages. Held at the Valencia campus in rooms S-130, 
The free events are from 4.30 to 6 p.m. on the first and third Saturdays of the month. All drums are provided by local drum maker Remo Incorporated, but participants are welcome to bring their own drum, tambourine, or percussion instruments. You don't need any musical experience to participate. Simply come with an open mind. For more information about the event, contact John Fitzgerald at jfitzgerald at remo.com. Many artists, especially young artists, do not get the opportunity to display their work. Thanks to our own art gallery here at College of the Canyons, some young Hart District High School art students got the chance to show off their artwork. The exhibition was held last week, where family and friends got to see all the artwork around the gallery. I had the chance to talk to some of the students and ask how they felt. I think it's definitely cool. I'm very excited to have my artwork out as an artist. That's definitely something that you want to be doing, getting it out to everybody. And it's great to be around people my age and seeing what everybody else is doing. It's nice. It's a good experience. Like, I never had my work up before. Like, I really don't show my work. The direction of the Art Invitational was determined by the high school art lead instructors. The idea in this case was to uh, get together with all the high school lead instructors, art instructors, and, and let them help guide where this exhibition went. So we had a couple of meetings and uh, I asked them what they would like to see happen. And we developed a plan for this exhibition and, uh, and uh, went through and executed the show and uh, everyone seems to be pretty pleased. And we've had a great turnout tonight. A lot of, a lot of students, all the lead faculty have been here and it's really been terrific. Perfect turnout it was. A large number of supportive guests came out to encourage the artists. I'm very proud of the work they've done. Oh, the work is so interesting. They're fantastic. Love it. Some really talented people here. Like, I know some of them from Valencia High School mm -hmm. prior, and they've grown a lot, and it's good to see. Still ahead on Cougar News, we have a look at news from around the Santa Clarita Valley. We have news on the controversial Las Lomas project and a key decision from Los Angeles. Howdy friends, it's time to dust off your boots and head on over to the city of Santa Clarita's annual Cowboy Festival. The Old West comes alive as you walk down the streets of the Manager Ranch Motion Picture Studio. They've been on stop entertainment all weekend with nationally renowned musicians and cowboy poets. Get fitted up with authentic cowboy gear and taste the best cowboy grub in the West. So come on out to the historic Manager Ranch Motion Picture Studio in the rustic hills of Santa Clarita. Hey, buddy. Salam. Bonjour. Namaste. Привет. Здраво. Привет. Welcome back to Cougar News. Business has been an important part in the growth of the Santa Clarita Valley. 2006, the Small Business Development Center of the Santa Clarita Valley was launched in partnership with COC. Well, Small Business Development Center is basically an organization, a nonprofit organization that's local, that's here to help businesses. And basically that's small businesses anywhere from entrepreneurs to people who haven't even gotten their business started to small businesses that are thriving. 95% of the cases, the SBDC Center is linked with the local community college. So here, um, currently we're hosted temporarily at the Chamber of Commerce, who's been kind enough to grant us some space, but eventually, I think later this year, we'll be at the um, COC campus. For more information, you can visit the SBDC and Masterminds website at www.canyonsecondev.org. Many folks think that Santa Clarita is a place to be, and now at least one magazine agrees. Los Angeles Business Journal recently named Santa Clarita the best city for industrial development. 
The article mentions the city's friendly business practices, long-term planning, and success in supporting targeted business sectors. City manager Ken Polskim is excited about the award and says Santa Clarita will continue to be business friendly. The Las Lomas project is now dead after a 10-5 vote by the Los Angeles City Council last week. The Las Lomas project was widely opposed by many residents and the Santa Clarita City Council. The Las Lomas development would have been built would have built more than 5,500 homes and nearly 3 million square feet of office, retail, and community space along the hillside by the 5 and 14 interchange in Newhall. In a 10-5 vote review of the project by the City Council's planning department was halted, effectively ending the Las Lomas development. In a statement, Mayor Bob Keller said that the Las Lomas is the wrong project in the wrong place and on behalf of the people of Santa Clarita. He was very pleased that the city of Los Angeles voted the way they did. Do you have a need for speed? Well, get ready for a high-performance racing experience that is unique to Southern California. We go to the newsroom where Kelly Nish gives us the details. What comes to mind when you think of racing? Indianapolis 500? Daytona 500? Grand Prix? What about MB2 Raceway in Silmar? I got a chance to visit MB2 and figure out what all the buzz is about. MB2 Raceway is a new regional symbol of Southern California's love for racing and race culture. It's an enterprise that delivers motorsports enthusiasts a much needed outlet to fulfill their need for speed and an exciting, friendly, and dynamic race environment. So you just finished racing. How did you like it? It was very good. That's good. Did you crash at all? Uh, nope. No? Did anyone bump you or anything like that when you're racing? They did bump me a couple times. So what was your favorite part about racing? My favorite part about racing was going fast. You like to go fast? Yep. Yeah, I don't blame you. I like to go fast too. <laughs> The 60,000 square foot race complex with a professionally designed quarter mile road race course provides challenging racing to the most experienced of racers, yet also is fun and exciting for the general public. So tell me a little bit about MB2, like the rules and stuff like that. All right, uh, we, we have three main rules. Uh, number one is no bumping, don't hit the wall, stuff like that. Um, so you definitely want to use your brakes. Uh, that's the second one. Uh, and the blue flag. Blue flag, uh, when we wave that, it just means you're too slow, so move out of the way okay. and let the person behind you pass. Okay. So that's okay, what about teens, family environment, is it good for that? Uh, I think it's a good, it's both. It's, it's a great family environment. It's also a good place to come if you, uh, you want to race with your boys or your girls or whatever. Um, we have junior carts and adult carts, so like it, let's say if it's a slow night, families want to come in and race, you know, hey, my dad wants to race with the little guy. Okay. We can work something out like that. Okay, sounds good. And tell me about the track. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, it's a quarter mile long. Uh, we can put up to 10 cars on at once. MB2 provides high performance electric carts, which are emission free and shipped in from Italy. As you can see, it's a huge facility filled with kids and teens and parents. They have an arcade and they have a party room for corporate events and they have a final score coming soon. So next time you're looking for that adrenaline rush, go to mb2raceway.com. Back to you guys in the studio. Dancing, eating, and taking part in the New Year. That's not news, you say, unless, of course, you're Persian. COC's own Persian club put together a day packed of festivities to celebrate March 20th, the Persian New Year. The Persian club transformed the cafeteria into a place to celebrate Persian traditions and culture. They provided music, food, and good company to help make the New Year celebration a memorable one. Many joined in the fun, but they also helped raise awareness of the Persian population right here at COC. Ahead on Cougar News, the Cougars play two on the diamond and then two more and two more. We explain. Matt Camlet has all the action in sports after this.
It's springtime, and that can only mean one thing for our own Matt Camlet. Yes, it means the cougars are all over the diamond, and so is Matt Camlet. So he joins us now with a look at sports. Matt? Thanks, Beatrice. Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Camlet. Here's the latest with your Cougar sports. Cougars were busy this past week. They traveled to Santa Maria to participate in the Easter baseball tournament. Let's just say I don't think the week could have gone any better. First game was an easy breeze for the Cougars as they scored six runs in the first three innings against LA Harbor and go on to win it 13 to three. John Hay went one for three with the home run and John Contreras had a perfect day, three for three with two RBIs. Brian Charnock drove in four runs on three hits. From there on, it went to game two and took a while for the offense to get going, but they scored three runs to beat Fresno City three to one. John Hay continued his hot hitting with a two run home run in the sixth. That was his second in as many games. Mike McCravey went on to pitch a three hitter while striking out seven and giving up one run. And lastly, the final game where the Cougars bats didn't wake up until the bottom of the ninth inning. It was bats that loaded the bases, yet it was not the bats that got the runs in. A walk, a hit batsman, and a double play is what got the three runs in for COC. Kyle Harris went for four while scoring one. Caleb DeVille allowed five hits and one run while striking out four. Cougars have now extended their winning to an unpre unprecedented 10 games and improved to an impressive record of 16 and 7. Lady Cougars had an intense doubleheader against Glendale here at COC on Tuesday. Our girls trying to even out their season's record with only 13 games left to go in regular season play. The beginning of a long day for our Cougars and the Vaqueros of Glendale. Weather is absolutely beautiful at a sunny 76 degree day with no wind. Early in the game, Crystal Yurkidas is stuck between third and home. She tries to slide into third, but runner is there. She'll be out. Pitcher Sarah Campos will struggle a bit, walking a batter on bases loaded. That'll bring in Glendale to strike first. Their offensive assault doesn't stop, pulling an early 4-1 to one lead in the fourth. Stepping up is the Cougar infield. Check out this fancy catch by first baseman Lauren Rose. Ouch. Later on, here's Courtney Farrell sliding into third. She's called out. Coach will contest and will reverse the call. Cougars able to bring in a few runners. Now only down by one, and the intensity heats up. Rose dives for that one, won't get the out. Cougars later stack up the bases, but in the end can't bring them in as they fall to Glendale five to three. Rough loss, and the Cougars don't get a chance to lick their wounds as the second game of the doubleheader between our girls and Glendale commences. Ladies of Glendale were confident with momentum as they tried to upset our Cougars for the second time of the day. Glendale takes an early lead, shutting down our offense. Here's a pop fly by Lauren Rose, caught easily by Glendale's Desiree Cunanan. Sarah Campos did what she could, able to force some strikeouts, but the bats were awake for the Vaqueros. Here's a double by Glendale's Sarah Sardo, one of many who contributed to Glendale's offense. On defense, pitcher Kelly Koros was on fire, striking out 15 batters on the day. COC loses its second game of the day to Glendale, 7-3. Let's fast forward a couple days to Thursday at COC where our girls again saw action, this time against rival Bakersfield. Another great day for softball as we played host to the Renegades of Bakersfield. Our girls were pumped up for this one. Sarah Campos will hit her Heather Spoon right in the kneecap early on. She struggles to get to first base. She'll, she'll get checked out and later is fine. Later in the inning, Spoon will collide with our third baseman, Jackie Ruiz, who gets checked out and returns with a busted lip. Bakersfield strikes first, first off an RBI, then off this botched pitch by Campos. Infield stayed sharp. Check out Lauren Rose's splits catch at first. It's becoming her trademark. Cougs down by two early, and the runs come piling in, bringing in four in the second inning alone. But they don't stop there. By the fifth inning, COC brings in nine runners. With a commanding lead, Sarah Campos steps up, knocking off some batters. And here's a beautiful effort by Sarah Hassenfuss to force the out. Bakersfield will bring in some runners, but it's too little too late. And the Cougars hold on to beat them 9-7, to seven, bringing their record to 12-18. and 18. That'll wrap it up on the athletic front. For Cougar Sports, I'm Matt Camlet. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Matt. That does it for this edition of Cougar News. I'm Beatrice Franklin. Remember, 
You can watch this episode and previous episodes of Cougar News online at scbtv.com. And I'm Erin Fitzgerald. If you have any comments, story ideas, or news tips, please feel free to email us at cougarnews@canyons.edu. We leave you with a look at just one of the activities the CSC ASG put on for students on campus. Santa Clarita is Southern California's entertainment destination. Just minutes from LA, Santa Clarita's year-round weather means you can enjoy year-round fun. Like thrilling coasters and water parks, premium shopping, destination day spas, fine dining, outdoor adventure, and major events such as wine festivals, golf tournaments, and the Cowboy Festival. Santa Clarita, always in season. Did you know over the past four years, more than 100 newborns have been abandoned across the country? In Los Angeles County, no one ever has to abandon a baby again. Hello, I'm Lorene Lopez, Community Services Representative for the County of Los Angeles Fire Department. I'm here to tell you about the Safely Surrendered Baby Law. California's Safely Surrendered Baby Law allows an adult to surrender a baby 72 hours after the birth to any fire station or emergency room without fear of prosecution for abandonment, as long as the newborn has not been physically abused or neglected. A 24-hour hotline is available to provide more information about the law in 160 languages. We understand that it is an emotionally difficult decision to surrender an infant, but it is a firefighter's job to protect and help all members of the public, especially innocent newborns. Here is how the Safe Surrender program works. The surrendering adult is given a medical history form to mail back in a postage paid envelope. A coded bracelet is placed around the baby's ankle and a matching one is given to the adult. The baby will then be taken to a local hospital where the LA County Department of Children and Family Services will be contacted so that the baby may be adopted into a loving home. If the parent changes their mind and wants the baby back, they can call the Department of Children and Family Services within 14 days from the day the baby is brought in. Remember, some of our best rescues come to us. Have a banana. Eating well and playing go together like best friends. You better believe it. With the food pyramid, the bare necessities of living healthy are easy. Bare necessities, the simple bare necessities. So eat right. Be active. I'll move. That's it. And don't forget to have fun. That's the way to be the best. You're a lot of fun, Blue. At anything you do. You can go to mypyramid.gov to play some games and find out more.